I'm Madeline Herrera, and my partner is Kimberly Badger. And today we will be talking about how the United States government should repeal the Roe v. Wade decision to legalize abortion. Okay, starting with our background and inherency claim, Roe v. Wade was a decision made January 22, 1973, recognizing that a woman's right to abortion was protected by the right to privacy and implied by the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 9th, and 14th Amendments, and was not an issue that, state, that states could outright prohibit. Some more background on this. According to the Guttmacher Institute, uh, the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision, um, the U.S. Supreme Court specifically ruled that a woman in consultation with her physician had a constitutionally constitutional <coughs> protected right to choose abortion in the early stages of pregnancy, that is, before viability. And um, going back to where it first began in Texas, um, Roe filed a lawsuit in the federal district court on behalf of herself and all other pregnant women. The suit sought to have the Texas abortion law declared unconstitutional as an invasion of her right to privacy, as guaranteed by the amendments before stated. Um, some statistics about abortion. So 58% of women are having abortions in their 20s. This is all from the same uh, website source. Um, and then racially, no racial or ethnic group makes up a priority or a, ma a majority. 36% of women obtaining abortions are white, non-Hispanic. 30% are black, non-Hispanic. 25% are Hispanic and 9% are of other racial backgrounds. So that is just um, to our base for our arguments today. Um, the significance claim is Roe v. Wade should be abolished because abortion goes against different religious beliefs and the after effects of abortion, both mental and physical, make it less desirable. Now, according to the Pew Research Center's Religion and Public Life Project, uh, many, well, many, well, the, many religions agree that abortion is only condoned when the life of the mother is endangered, while others also include exceptions such as rape and incest. Um, this website um, lists out the different standpoints from the official websites of different religions. Um, so the Episcopal Church recognizes a woman's right to terminate her pregnancy, but it only condones abortion in cases of rape and incest, um, or when the mother's physical or mental health is at risk. So going into the Jesus Christ of Latter Latter Day, Latter -day Saints, teaches that elective abortion for personal or social convenience is contrary to the will and commandments of God. Um, however, the church does um, believe that certain circumstances can justify abortion, but again, it's in the cases of rape and incest. Um, and then for Hindu teachings, going to the other side of the spectrum, unless a mother's health is at risk, they condemn abortion also, because it violates the religion's teachings to not violence. Uh, and then in Jewish teachings, uh, they sanction abortion as a means of safeguard, safeguarding their life and well-being of the mother. Um, according also that there are also many religions that believe in the sanctity of life, and those are uh, religions that are more based in Christian roots. So they, the phrase, the sanctity of life, reflects the belief that because people are made in God's image, and that which is also stated in Genesis, the book of Genesis in the Bible, human life has an inherently sacred attribute that should be protected and respected at all times. While God gave humanity the authority to kill any other forms of life, Genesis 9, the murdering of other human beings is expressly forbidden with the penalty of being death. Um, the sanctity, according to gotquestions.org, the sanctity of human life is not due to the fact that we are such wonderful and good beings. The only reason the sanctity of life applies to humanity is the fact that they believe that God created us in his image and set us apart from all other forms of life. Although that, all, that image is believed to be more marred by sin, his image is still present in humanity. So they believe that we are like God and that the likeness means that human life um, is always to be treated with dignity and respect. This leads me into going to more scientific approaches as to why um, abortion is less desirable, and mainly because of the effects of abortion. So according to the psychological complications, uh, the meta-analysis meta examined and combined results of 22 studies, and these studies reveal higher rates of mental health problems associated with abortion. Um, so 34% higher people got anxiety who had abortion, 37% in depression, heavier alcohol use 110% higher, and marijuana use 230% higher, and 155% higher in rates of suicidal behavior.
Um, also, it is the, according to after abortion, uh, medical records of 56,741 California Medicaid patients, so our homegrown state here, revealed that women who had abortions were 160% more likely than delivering women to be hospitalized for psychiatric treatment in the first 90 days following the abortion of the fourth week. In the study of post-abortion patients only eight weeks after their abortion, researchers found that 44% complained of nervous disorders, 36% sleep disturbances, 31 regrets about the decision, 11% have prescribed psychotropic medicine by their family doctors. Um, but going into our solvency, if they're appealing a Roe v. will be forced to use, people will be forced to use other forms of birth control, and they will have to take even more responsibility for their actions. So different forms of birth control include just regular birth control that the majority of women all know, but they also include abstinence, which is when you won't have sex until you've um, chosen your forever partner or marriage, uh, birth control implants, birth control pills, and spermicide. Um, another, going into our plan of action, to repeal the Roe v. Wade decision and allow government funding to go to programs already in place for those looking for dogs. So foster care, teenage pregnancy programs, and low-income family programs. Um, these can also, for especially for adoption families, this can include um, tax, tax credits and tax deductions. But also, if in the case of an international adoption, travel, for travel, Delta Airlines offers very fair discounts for those adopting. And in government programs such as adoption assistance programs, AAP can offer financial aid and medical to parents with eligible children. And again, adoption tax credits, and they can get up to a break of thirteen thousand three hundred seventy for adoption-related expenses. And there are also federal grants available to those who are looking to adopt. Um, so, with that being said, I will.